What's up, Flip Fam? Welcome to the channel. Today's video was supposed to be about curb appeal, but instead we hit 2,000 subscribers thanks to you guys, and we thought it would be better to celebrate. We're gonna be doing a Q&A and eating a custom cake. Now we don't have any fancy cake shops open today, but luckily I am a big fan of how to cake it. Shout out to you, Yolanda. All right, cue that buttery cake bake B-roll footage, bruh. <laughs> that was good. I get this feeling in my bones I can't ignore. Don't you feel that rhythm? Yeah, yeah. I think I feel the seasons changing. Well, that New Year's resolution's going great. I feel it in my bones, yeah. I got this feeling in my bones, feeling in my bones, feeling in my bones. And if the music ever stops, just listen. So I am measuring to find the center of the cake so that we can cut out a secret chamber. And that is a place in the center of the cake that you can stuff goodies inside of so when you slice it, they'll fall out of the cake. Don't feel good. Okay, so the cake is in the fridge. Uh, the crumb coat has to chill before we can put on the fondant. So we're gonna go ahead and get started answering these questions. We just went ahead and grabbed a combination of questions from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Check out all those social medias if you want to, and then we will try to get to as many of these as we can. So how do you wanna do this? Do you want me to go first, and then we'll just go back and forth? Yeah, we'll just go back and forth, and then if one of us wants to jump in, we can. Okay, okay let's get started. Okay, how did you two meet? We met in college. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find new creative video ideas? Whenever we think something would be funny or fun, we just try it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Video sucks. You wanna see something like that? Go back out and check our Do It Yourself or Don't series. We made vintage game shows where we tried to answer the question, should you do the work yourself or hire someone else to do it? And it was really corny, went on way too long, but it was an idea we had, so. And that's one of the most fun things about the YouTube channel is like, you have a corny idea and you get to take it from your head and put it on the screen. So that's that's really neat when it works out. On to the next one. Okay, what would you be doing if you were not flipping real estate? That's a good question. So I would be concentrating more on my business probably. Um, I would definitely get outdoors more and do more things for my physical health, for sure. When buying a flip house, what are some good strategies if you have no down payment? You can do a 100% loan uh, it's higher interest, usually there's PMI, which is this bullshit insurance. So the lender gets extra money in case you never make your payment. So you're just throwing money away. But if you don't have a down payment for a house, cool, do a 100% loan if your area offers them and then use your money to fix it up and try to sell it and make a profit. What was the most challenging part of the flip? Just dealing with the concrete walls. Oh, the whole gosh, downstairs yeah. of the con of the house is built with like cinder block walls. So every little thing just took extra time because like if you wanted to redo the wall covering, you couldn't just bust down the old sheetrock and put up new. You had to physically scrape the concrete off the wall. If you wanted to rerun the electrical, that was an extra hassle. Same thing with the plumbing. Everything was just way harder. What is the number one thing you would recommend to someone that is trying to flip their first house? <sighs> Profit potentials. So you wanna find a house that's undervalued, needs some work, that way whenever you fix it up, you can sell it for market value. How long have you been doing this? Um, we started in 2016. What is your take on the future <laughs> of real estate market in 2021 and beyond? I think it looks good. So far, it's, so good. Yeah, especially since the pandemic, a lot of people like have been holding on to their properties, so demand is really through the roof right now. Is it allowed to be your own realtor and contractor? Depends on where you're at. Yeah, so in our area, as long as you, it's your primary residence, you don't even need to be a licensed contractor to do the work on your house. Yeah, you can be a realtor and sell your own house. Like, you just have to disclose that. Mm -hmm. Did you get burned in some of your transactions? Never on a flip. We've always been profitable, but we have been burned as far as, like, contractors. What is your unforgettable experience in this whole journey of what to flip? Probably breaking my nose. Uh -huh, this my shit. Finding a dead squirrel, that was pretty cool. I found a problem. Come on. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 
What is your plan for the new year? Okay, we already covered this in last week's video. Barn Dominium, another flip house, vlogs, and van life fan. We're gonna do a van life series. Have you guys ever encountered a house with asbestos? Not, like we haven't ever torn into asbestos, but we have had it on siding on the outside of the house. And we did think we had it in this house. We were terrified. So we did an asbestos test on the wall and it came back negative. And we had a guy to come over to look at doing sheetrock and he's like, wow, it looks like somebody tried to already patch that entire wall. And I was like, this wall right here? And he goes, yeah, you can tell that that's all not original. We're like, what? Cause that's the wall we tested. So, you know, we're freaking out cause we'd already torn into the walls and we the floors demoed the bathroom and we just yeah. remember how much dust we got covered in and we're like, oh my God, did we just track asbestos all into our house, into our cars, it's all over our clothes, we've been breathing it in. So for the next like two weeks until the other asbestos test came back negative, I was on WebMD every day, like telling Kayla like, well, this is what we got to look forward to in our fifties. I hope you don't like breathing. <laughs> but we're good. Yeah, we're good. What's your favorite activity in the house before you sell it? Probably playing outside. <laughs> <laughs> just finished the whole series. Awesome work. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. What is you first lesson learned flipping a house? So what would you say is the first lesson you learned flipping a house? I would say my first lesson learned flipping a house is just remembering that it's not your forever home. Don't do everything that you like in the house, but just remembering what will attract the most potential buyers. Right. Like we would love to do Navy cabinets with gold hardware in a kitchen and all kinds of cool, crazy modern touches, but we know that's gonna alienate certain buyers. We just wanna cast a wider net so we can sell the house faster. Who is the one that inspired you to flip house for profits? No one, no one inspired us to do it. Whenever we did it the first time and we found out we could make money, then we were kind of like, well, shit, let's just keep doing this. What is your biggest gain in one flip? We think it's this one. We haven't tallied everything up. And for tax purposes, we're not gonna tell you just yet because we don't wanna get in trouble. But we will be doing a full wrap up video that breaks everything down and tells you exactly how much we spent, exactly how much we made in profit, blah, blah, blah. All the juicy details. So just stay tuned for that one. When is the merch store gonna be available? I don't know, keep your eyes peeled for that one. Let us know what you guys want. Of course, we'll do shirts and hoodies and thongs and things like that. So just let us know <laughs> what you guys are into. What is your favorite thing about this house before you decide to flip it? Uh, the basement looked like the perfect set for a horror movie, so it that was pretty cool. red paint spilled all over the floors. Red paint, blood, tomato, tomato. What is the hardest decision you had to make in your experience? Uh, probably, I mean, the concrete countertops were a pretty big decision. When's the last time you guys had six lids? Anybody? Six lids. I would say just trying to find the real estate is probably the hardest part, wouldn't you think? Yeah, for sure. Do you have any regrets in your dealings? Um, I have regrets in hiring certain contractors. Yes. I'm not gonna name their names, Jack. <laughs> 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 We're not gonna name their name. If you're watching this and claimed, you're our biggest regrets. Why? Um, <laughs> what is one thing that you have learned during the pandemic? Hmm. I would say one thing that we've learned is not to put all of your eggs into one basket. Even an industry that you thought was very stable this year could have changed like that. Okay, so I think it's time the cakes have chilled, so we're gonna roll out the fondant. Okay, so Kayla's gonna work on the fondant and I'm gonna continue on with the questions. What is the most challenging thing you've done this year in 2020? We got a puppy and for like the that first eight challenging. weeks of her life, she wouldn't sleep, so that was kind of uh, challenging. Future goals of what the flip in 2021. We've already went over this, but basically it's gonna be another house flip, barn dominium, we do a van life van build, we're gonna do more vlogs. We wanna do the barn dominium specifically because, oh no, oh God. I see him always pick it up like that. <laughs> I don't look right. Uh, so with the barn dominium, it's basically a post and beam structure. So like you don't have to have any interior walls. You can just have this big open warehouse, all of my film equipment, everything with her business, all of our tools and everything. We can have it under one roof and have like a home base. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Me too. We actually just purchased some land. I mean, it's definitely got potential. What do you think, babe? I think we should do it. What do you think, June? What do you think? See this like may it. be the spot for the future What the Flip Barn Do. 
maybe that'll be the first thing we tackle this year. Love the production quality of your vids. You guys killed it. Happily subscribe. Random question for you guys. If you could change what falls from the sky every time it rains, what would it be and why? Money. Snow. Wish us luck. Here we go. All right, we're going to slide in the cake. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Hold that over it. We're going to lay. Whoa. Whoa. I don't think you made it wide enough. I see people work it like this, and then they work it down. Gosh, that's gonna look good. Wait, why is my fondant peeling? Okay, so update on the cake. Um, this is the better side. <laughs> looks like a crusty marshmallow. Ben's side's gonna be great, and it is moist. Okay. And now it looks I'm like trying, this is my first time ever making a cake. Will you live in the barn once it's built or sell it? Um, we'll be living in it. We'll be living in it. The plan with the barn dominium, they're not gonna be super easy to sell because it's not something that you can like finance, finance really. easily. So someone's gonna have to either have like enough money for like a serious conventional loan or, I'm just gonna push your head right there, oh, sorry. sorry. Or they'll have to have enough just to pay it cash outright. More than likely we're planning on living in it for a time and then we wanna do this multiple times in like all of our favorite cities. So the goal is to own property and rent it out. That way we can get some passive income, whether that's Airbnb or whatever, and then have rental properties in all of our favorite cities. That's the goal, that's the dream. But of course, if somebody wants to offer me enough money, you know, everything does have a price tag. How long will it take to sell once you finish the flip? Well, Ver and Joyce, I don't think you've watched the channel, but uh, well, we got an offer on this house within one week of listing it because the market right now is just booming. I had to go back and forth, fell through another other offer, back and forth, fell through. And then finally we got a cash offer, which was great because you don't have to deal with a lot of the red tape. Closing moves along a lot faster. Initially one week, but um, in total, it was like a month and a half, two months. Is flipping houses a good investment? It can be, but also you can lose your ass if you don't do your homework to your research, you know. How much money to flip a house? It just depends. In the old days, you used to be able to find a house that was like bank foreclosed, offer them a low ball amount of money, go in there, paint the walls, clean everything up, maybe replace the carpet with some laminate floor, and then you could add $30,000, $40,000 to the price tag and get it. Nowadays, there are these companies out there that that's all they do. They find houses that are foreclosed on or they're cheap and they buy them and then they do that exactly and then they flip them. So for us, just beat it to death, babe. Just stab it, that looks safe. Yeah, let's just take a knife and stab it. How about a spoon? Spoon? Spoon. Spoon's not sharp. You want a spoon? Spoon, there we go. It's so hard, it's not gonna come out here. Why don't you throw in the microwave for like a second? Yeah. Fine? Hell, I don't know, try it. Okay, so now Kayla and I, most of the houses we try to renovate, um, I mean, they're pretty effed up. We have to take really messed up houses that need a lot of work. Oh my gosh. Did it work? Yeah. So the houses Kayla and I are finding, um, they need a lot more work, but with those houses, there's also a lot more profit potential, but it also just takes a little bit longer to get the house flipped. What are the biggest risks associated with flipping a house? Losing, Losing money. money. How do you find a house to flip and how do you determine the price to offer? Okay. Well, that's the hardest part. You that is the hardest like part. Three months and then you don't find anything and you get discouraged and then you just move on. Yep. And something will show up. That's usually how it happens, actually. Yeah, whenever really. we give up and we don't look as hard, that's usually whenever it comes up on the market. And then so there's a few things you can do. First off, go on Trulia. I don't know if any of the other sites do, but Trulia allows you to search for foreclosures. Mm -hmm. But mostly just look for houses that are undervalued. Look at the comparable houses in the area. So if the houses in that area are selling for $400 a square foot, $500 a square foot, $100 a square foot, whatever, take that number and apply it to the house you're looking at. So if a decent condition house is selling for $100 per square foot, and the house you're looking at is 1,000 square feet, then you know that it could potentially be worth $100,000. If it's selling for 50, you think it's gonna cost 20 for repairs, that means you're all in at 70, so you could potentially make $30,000. That's a decent way to figure out what to offer, how to budget, and uh, go from there. I love y'all's channel. Do y'all plan on living there forever? Also, do you actually keep one of the homes that you flip? No. no. Everybody always says, you're gonna fall in love with it and you're gonna move into it. I just know it. Mm -mm. No. What is the boldest design or flip choice you made or you want to make in the future? Concrete countertops are bold because a lot of people don't understand them. They look at them, they're like, oh, this big old gray, ugly rock. Why would I want concrete as a countertop? And then, but, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
I know, it's looking like a porcupine. What got you interested in flipping? Okay, we get that question a ton, so let's just go ahead. How do we get into flipping houses? How do we get started? Basically, a few years ago when Caleb and I were gonna buy our first house, we had no intentions. That looks like pure It doesn't look. Yeah, you're right, it looks fine. It looks great, babe, good job. Good job, baby. It looks good, really. Honey, it looks fine. So, a few years ago when Kayla and I were gonna buy our first house, we had no intentions of flipping a house or home renovation. We wanted something turnkey ready. So we found this beautiful house, a lot of land, big house, had everything we wanted. And we made an offer on it, the offer got accepted, and then something happened and... Something fell through. Something fell through on the seller side and we couldn't have the house. And we were bummed about it because we did that stupid thing where we already start planning our Christmases there. And we start thinking, man, we could have like people over and have like bonfires over there and barbecue and like... You do that thing where you start planning your life in it. So when they told us we couldn't have it, we, we felt like we lost something. We're like, no. It was actually a blessing because the house was way, 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 way too expensive, way out of our budget. And we would have been, we would have been house broke spending all of our money to pay this mortgage. So whenever they told us we couldn't have the house, we realized, okay, that was way too much money. But then we, wouldn't, we didn't want to make any concessions. We still wanted a big house. We still wanted a lot of land. So we said, okay, let's find a house that has potential. That's a big house, has a lot of land, but maybe is beat up and we can fix it up over the next 10, 20 years and have our dream home. So that's what we did. We found this house, big four bedroom house, a lot of land, and it definitely needed some work. It was 50% of market value. It was a foreclosure and for a reason, because like bums had been using it as their own personal trap house. There was graffiti on the wall. Stains everywhere. Stains everywhere. It didn't have working electricity, didn't have working water. Yeah. There were spoons everywhere. I swear to God, from people doing heroin, there were spoons everywhere. I thought Kayla was playing a joke on me. The entire time we were in that house, every time I would go outside to cut the grass, I would find spoons. I thought she was just standing on the porch when I wasn't looking, just chucking spoons. So anyways, then when you go, we went to buy the house, we did it stupidly. We did a first time home buyer loan, which meant we had to pay higher interest. We had that PMI insurance. And when you go to buy a house, if you've never done it, they sit you down and they give you a stack of papers that you have to look through and they explain everything you're getting yourself into. So we looked at it and realized, man, we're gonna be in our 50s when we own this house. It doesn't matter that this home has been the place that we've slept and had meals and had Christmases and everybody's like, yeah, that's Trav's house, that's Kay's house, doesn't matter. It's not technically yours. So anything could happen you know, disaster could happen, you guys could both lose your jobs, and then that house that was your home, it's not yours anymore. So we didn't like the idea of being tied to a payment for 30 years, and on top of that, the money we would have spent in insurance, that PMI and interest, we could have bought another house. So we were like, okay, screw this, let's just take the next year, and instead of fixing this up to live in, let's just fix this thing up sell it and then let's just Go buy something yeah let's just buy something and own it we had no idea of like flipping we just wanted to buy something cheap and own it so we were looking at tiny houses we were looking at van life vans barn dominiums uh, shipping container houses any sort of cheap easy to buy things hell i would have taken a single wide clayton mobile home doesn't matter i just didn't want to have a payment and then we started fixing it up and it was kind of comical because we didn't have we didn't want to take out a loan so we just used any extra money that we had so Kayla would buy a toilet and then I would buy a tile and then in a couple weeks maybe we can buy that bathtub and then we can start work on the bathroom. So we, we did tile in the kitchen and I remember buying boxes like every week. Yeah, we'd have like to. Like I would buy one box a week. Eventually we got it finished and of course all of our family members and friends that were like, oh my God, why would you want to buy that place? It's such a disaster. Gosh, why would you do that to yourself? It's going to be so much work. It's going to be so much work. We're the same people going, oh my God, it's beautiful. You made it such a nice home. Why would you guys are so lucky. Why would you ever want to leave? And then sold it and got a check for $50,000. Like 30, some of it was profit. We only spent like 20 grand. But the 30 was cool, but it was the 20 that was like, okay, light bulbs. Because I didn't understand what investing was. I was stupid. And had we had not worked on that house that year, we would have easily blown 20 grand on trips, or eating out, clothes, whatever. I would have had nothing to show for spending that $20,000. But instead, we spent $20,000 on the house and then we got it back. And I was like, 
oh shit, this is what rich people have figured out. It's like investing. I took that $20,000 and it was the exact same as taking every penny and just stuffing it in the bank for a year. But then on top of that, instead of just having the money sitting in the bank, we got $30,000 by selling this house for our efforts. And I was like, okay, cool. Forget the tiny home, forget the stupid van. This is what we're doing. And we took that money and we were able to flip a house by buying, con or, you know, hiring contractors to speed up the work. And instead of having to buy uh, materials piece by piece, now we had money invested. We had $50,000 in, you know, investment capital. So we were able to do it on another house and get extra money and do it again and extra money. And then, like I said, on this last house, we have $117,000 from the house. Now, of course, that's not all profit and we are going to have to pay taxes, but that's investment capital for the next place, which is why we're getting excited to moving on to new things like the van life van, of course, another flip, but also the barn dominium. That way, maybe we've got some rental opportunities in the future. So instead of just getting money when we sell the house, we can also get money passively whenever we're not there and we're renting it Airbnb style. So anyways, long story short, that is how we got into flipping. Uh, as far as experience goes, Kayla and I have always been doing projects, working on houses. We grew up, her dad did it, my dad did it. We were always around it. I was a real estate agent at one point in time. So we've got lots of experience as far as that goes. But uh, as far as flipping houses, it never crossed our minds until we realized we just didn't want to have a payment hanging over our head for 10, 15, 30 years. We just said we'd rather own something. Is cereal soup. Okay, Kayla and I go back and forward on this one. She's like, well, it's items in a liquid that you eat. So yeah, it's soup. I think soup needs to be heated. I know gazpachos in there, whatever, cold soup. To me, that's just watery salsa. I think cereal is not soup. Cereal is cereal because it's made out of cereal grains or whatever. And then you just pour milk over it to soften it so you don't hurt your mouth when you eat it. Ever try to eat Captain Crunch without milk? And tear up the roof of your mouth. What type of van are you going to renovate? We've looked at a bunch. I really like the Mercedes Sprinters with four wheel drive. It just seems really cool to have a van that you can take practically anywhere. Do you okay. think that the cake looks good? It's looking good. Congrats, congrats, well, congrats. I mean, it's finished. <laughs> so I why would you say that's looking good? We'll it's wipe good. it down with something. Go well, I don't, off I don't have a brush. You're supposed to brush it? I think. Okay, moment of truth. Ready? I mean, it looks pretty janky, but let's see Tell if this does any better. Just go for it. Oh, baby, now we're celebrating. Oh, oh God. God. Wow. Hey, that three layer, you did okay, though. That looks so good. I mean, I would say for your first attempt, you did pretty good. I'm not going to eat the gumballs. Mm. Listen, it's good. <laughs> the internet calls this a mukbang. Do people eat fondant? Moving on. What are your plans for the vlogs? Well, hopefully we'll be able to travel some more. And obviously this past year, we didn't really get to do that a whole lot. So hopefully in 2021, we can go places and do things like we usually do. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to just film stuff for us and to show off more of like our personal lives, us having fun, not just working on a house. We're gonna make our own separate playlist. So don't worry if you're just here for the house stuff, you'll be able to see that too. But we're gonna make these fun. So that way, even if you aren't into vlogs, you'll get some enjoyment out of this. How'd you get that shot with a GoPro in the fireplace video? Well, I lied and told everybody that I wrapped it with saran wrap and then spray painted it. I didn't do that. I didn't have saran wrap. I just didn't want to tell people to spray paint their GoPros, which is exactly what I did. So I just spray painted the camera and then I just went and washed it off really quick and it's fine. It's true. We did do that. Alrighty. So who won the giveaway? Uh, last video, we said we were giving away three $100 Amazon gift cards and we will be announcing the winner in the description below. So check, see if your name is there. If so, we'll be contacting you to get you your money. Thank you guys so much for participating. Uh, thanks for 2K. I don't know if you saw the balloons we got. We didn't do champagne this time. So it's really cool to see how fast this channel is growing considering we haven't been putting out videos as regularly or as often as we should. So we definitely hope to rectify that and make this channel more of a focus in the new year. So we've got lots of cool stuff coming up. Guys, I worked really hard on this cake. I'm a little self-conscious about it. So leave me a comment below. Yeah. Tell me what you really think. All right, guys, that's it for us. This was fun answering questions, eating cake. Um, we still have that curb appeal video that was supposed to go out today, 
but that will be coming out next week. It shows everything that we did with our current house on the exterior and everything you can do to your house to improve your curb appeal. We also have a few more videos from that house coming up as well as the final wrap up video, which talks about everything we spent, how big of an investment was and how much profit we made on that house. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. It helps our video be seen by more people and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, that's it for us, guys. We'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye. What, what brand do you like? We like Dewalt, that yellow fella. That's pretty good stuff. Makita's good, Milwaukee's good, Bush is good. <laughs> they don't make tools, but Milwaukee makes them make a crappy beer, so. That's true, they do make a beer. Who? Yeah. Milwaukee. Not the same people who make the tool. <laughs> There's also a city called Milwaukee. It's not owned by the people who make the tool either. Jesus. You like DeWalt? Hell, Milwaukee's got their own city. How long have you been doing this? Um, we started in 2016, the year that we got married. And... No, just say four years. God. God. 2016, the year of our Lord, when we got married. <laughs> Not more years.